Hello everyone, welcome back to the scrapbooking 365 days of weather in 2022 project. I'm Julie and in this video I'm going to share with you my April layout. Now I've gone ahead and I've did a lot of the pre-cutting right here and here I'm showing you that I'm going to be tracking my next three months a little bit differently. For the first three I used the minimum weather because I wanted to record the really, really cold weathers. And then here, I'm going to use the mid only because I want to have the opportunity to play with as many different colors as I can. So right now I'm kind of stuck in these colors right here. And as you can see, we used tags to record the days for the month of April. I also brought in the perfectly imperfect stamp set and I'm going to stamp on some of those tags where it rained because you know what they say, April showers will bring May flowers and uh, I thought that this stamp set was really good for that. And I'm sad to say that I had to bring back the month of January because yes, we did get snow and uh, we actually got snow on the last week of April, which really wasn't funny at all. And that's where this picture came in. I also stamped my title here or the month of April using New England Ivy ink. And I used the stitch fancy brackets to die cut that out. I'm going to sneak that right in back of my photos right here. And for the tags, I did bring in the tabs and tag um, for the middle one and the large and small ones are the build a tag dies and I will link all of that down below. But I think that those tags are a lot of fun. Now I want to do some splattering so let's clear the tags out of the way and I'm going to do some splattering on my base page right here. So I'm bringing in sage only because I want to have some details at the back but I don't want it to be um, too much. Like I don't want it to fight with all of the tags that are at the top and bottom. So I'm going to use here my fan brush, which I really like when I'm doing um, splatterings on the base pages because it gives you nice big splatters. But for more detail work, I still go to my tiny little brush. And you can see here that it's subdued, but it's just going to add a little bit to my base page. Now, all of the photos have been double matted in white and glacier only because that's the color that really suited the photos that I've selected for this month. So I've gone ahead and I've done that for all of them. And uh, I'm going to place those on my base pages right here. And I think that's the key when you're doing this layout. You need to allow enough space at the top and at the bottom to add all of your tags. And uh, so you just make sure you've got about an inch and a half at the top and at the bottom and just position your photos at the beginning and then you can add all of your tags and whatever embellishments you'd like to add. I did label all of my tags and I'm going to speed this up a little bit here and you can see that I'm just going through them and I'm going from 1 to 15. Now you have the option here of going straight across the top and then the bottom or putting your first 15 days on the left side and then the others on the right hand side. I'm going to add those little toppers onto the tags and I felt that um, I needed to ground the colors if you want. So here I'm using the dark side of mink since my background is the light side of mink. So everything is going to work really nicely together. I added this one here only on the big tags. I didn't add it on the smaller tags. And that pickup tool is perfect for this because there's 30 tags to dress up. So I thought I would need something that was nice and easy. And that little pickup tool was perfect. So here I'm showing you that my base page is mink. I've gone ahead and I've used the mink cardstock on the dark side and then I thought why not ink distress them a little bit so that they pop off the page. So we're going to put that right on top and you can see that it just gives it a little bit more dimension and then I'm going to run my ink pad 
all along the edges just to complete that look. I'm just going to finish that off quickly here and then I'm showing you that I did use the light side of Mink for my base pages. Now I did pull out my Versamat because I just find that it makes it nice and easy when you're putting down your pieces for your layout. And I also stamp those little splatters using the Perfectly Imperfect stamp set, but I also realized that my head was in the shot, so I kind of skipped that over, and I'll show you close-ups at the end, and you'll see how cute that turned out. So let's put those photos down, because I felt that it was the easiest way to build this layout by adding your pictures first. And then I'm going to tuck my little title right here underneath. And then we're going to start building our tags. Now, this is what worked for me. And the beauty of this project is that you also have Janice's interpretation of how she put the layout together because she designed this layout. And I find that when I work with a layout that Janice has designed, maybe my thought process is a little bit different than hers. And I think that it's a really good benefit for you because you get to see um, both of our ways on putting these layouts together. So for me, I actually did my tag starting from the outer edges of the, the page. And then I worked myself into the center as I was overlapping all of these tags. And I felt that it worked really nicely. And um, also using um, tape runner right here, as you can see, if I'm lifting them and then moving them ever so slightly, that was also a really good benefit. So I'm gonna add my last one right here and it just fits perfectly right on top. So again, working with my Versamat, I felt for me that it was easier just to flip my layout and do the same thing over. So starting on the outer edges and then working my way into the center. Now you'll see that my tags are not all the same. Like there's, I didn't follow like a large, medium, small, large, medium, small. I just kind of used them randomly so that they were not um, all the same and they gave a different look for both of the pages. Now I could have cut those with scissors but I find that for me it's a lot easier just to use a paper trimmer that way it's one and done and I know it's perfectly straight. So I'm going to add a little bit of ink right here just to finish off where I've trimmed off my tags and I think that that looks really really good. Um, I'm always surprised when Janice sends me the sketch at the middle of the month and says, oh, we're going to use tags. And I'm like, okay, that's fun. So each of these tags represent a day. And in my case, uh, when there's those little water droplets, it represents rain and then yes, snow. <laughs> so I've gone ahead here and I've done the same thing with the right hand side. And uh, you see that you've got these beautiful tags framing your layout. And you've got this one right here and see snow all the way down to the last week of April. That little guy represented how I felt that week for sure. So it's only at this point that I realized it needed a little bit more. So I went into Cricut and I added just a few little embellishment, not too much, but just something to dress up uh, the title and uh, just add a little bit of oomph to my page. I did show you here that I, I actually re-stamped that and pushed it over. I added my journaling right here at the bottom. Again, I brought in both of the stitched frame brackets because I thought that was a nice continuity between the title and the journaling. And then here on this side, I just felt it was a little bit bland, so I added something very minimal, but it just dresses up that page really nicely. I've gone ahead and I've cut the month of April. Now you can add it right here at the top. Let's move some stuff over for you here. All right, so this one right here can go at the top 
or even right here at the bottom. Now, speaking of the titles, Cricut was doing major upgrades uh, when we were designing this, so um, there's going to be a little bit of complications this month with printing out or cutting out these titles, but I also have all of these titles. No one has claimed the prize, so I'm going to add every single title. You just have to comment down below and your name is automatically added to the draw and you win all of this or the pot keeps growing. So let's take a look. I've added all of the names here from people that have commented in the month of March and here we have our winners. So Jojo, please contact me. If these don't match your weather, I understand the pot keeps on growing, but if they do, I will mail these out to you. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I hope you like this project. Now head over to Janice's channel and see what she's done with her Australian weather. Thanks for watching. See you next month.